the beach played an important part in many people's lives, including mine. Uh, in fact, I grew up spending a lot of time on the beach. Then when I finished my uh, college here, I went overseas to study uh, coastal zone management in the UK. So yeah, when I came back in 1999, I had uh, found that all the beaches had disappeared. There were no more beaches, you know. And uh, I tried to understand what had happened in these eight, nine years when I was away uh, to figure out, you know, uh, what was happening with the coast. Puducherry, 151 kilometers south of Chennai, was known for its beautiful sandy beach. People who grew up in the Union Territory in the 1960s and 70s remember spending their mornings and afternoons on the beach. The trouble began in 1989 when Puducherry's pristine beach with a promenade started disappearing. This happened due to sea erosion, which was caused by the construction of an ill-conceived harbour. But, 32 years later, thanks to the efforts of a citizen group, the beach has returned to the southern side of Puducherry. As much as 45% of India's 8,414 kilometer long coastline is facing erosion. Puducherry faces erosion on 57% of its coastline, which is the second highest in the country. Developmental activities without properly understanding the coastal dynamics is the prime reason for these accelerated erosions. One of the most important reasons for erosion has to do with littoral drift or longshore drift. Littoral drift is the movement of sedimental particles from one part of the beach to the other, depending upon the prevailing wind direction. Any construction in this region that obstructs the movement of sand along the coast will lead to erosion of beaches in one part and the formation of beaches in the other part. In the case of Puducherry, the trigger was the harbour constructed in 1989 that disrupted the littoral drift and resulted in the accumulation of sand on the southern side and erosion on the northern side. Thus, over the next decade, the coastal town of Puducherry lost its pristine beach. Uh, unfortunately, due to the coastal erosion and various development happening around the uh, Pondicherry port area, uh, the beach uh, disappeared almost about uh, 25 to 30 years back. And uh, the, the, uh, the Pondicherry people were missing the presence of a beach uh, since uh, almost few decades. The loss of the beach came with consequences of its own. The restriction on the movement of sand also devastated the coastline, its biodiversity and the livelihoods of many locals. More than a dozen fishing villages were wiped out and at least 7,000 families lost their only source of income. The government started dumping rocks for protecting the coast. As a result, the erosion happened and it had huge impacts. Firstly, <coughs> The saltwater intrusion turned the groundwater saline and today right up to 8 kilometers inland the water, has, water aquifer has become saline and as a result the agricultural lands have turned into wastelands. About 10 fishing villages lost their livelihoods and homes because of erosion. And the beach was a space where they parked their boats, it was their office space, their recreational space and all that, it was gone. It took years to identify and understand the problem that caused the beach to disappear. It was only in 2007 when a proposal for a second port came up that the people realized the impact of the harbour built in 1989. This is when the citizens of Puducherry realized that history must not be repeated. Thus, the story of Pondi Can began. 2007, after the deep water port proposal came up and we found out that the, uh, about the problem of erosion, we started Pondi Can, Pondi Citizens Action Network, with the mission of first stopping this disastrous project, which, which would have huge environmental, social, cultural and economic impacts on Pondicherry. And after stopping it, to start working for restoration and to 
see that it is it becomes as it was the pre-89 uh, uh, days where we used to enjoy the beach so much. In 2007, a court case was filed against the port with the help of Pondy Can. In 2009, they formed the National Coastal Protection Campaign with organizations along the coast of India to protest against the dilution of coastal protection laws and the unscientific coastal development. In 2012, Pondi Can came out with a report called The Challenged Coast of India, which highlighted the key issues faced by the coastal plains of India. And after six years of prolonged legal wrangling, in 2013, the port project was shelved. They also gathered information about the design faults of the old harbour and developed plans for restoration. In 2017, India's Ministry of Earth Sciences and the National Institute of Ocean Technology agreed to implement the beach reconstruction project. Um, what was in fact conceived of and designed were, was a two component, uh, there were two components. One was to bring the sand back and nourish the beaches and then it was felt that to hasten the process and, and give some short term success, we need to kind of have some minimum structure to stabilize the sand. A soft structure, a structure that would not interfere too much with the natural processes, would help in short-term stabilization uh, and therefore help our long-term object objective of restoring the beaches. For the beach nourishment project, over 5.10 lakh cubic tons of sand was dredged from the mouth of the Tengai Tatta fishing harbour, transported and deposited via pipelines four kilometers away, near the old pier. The next piece of the puzzle was an artificial submerged reef, which was the first of its kind in India. This 900-ton wedge-shaped steel structure acts as a speed breaker to slow down the natural erosion of sand. On a, in a natural sandy beach, you will have natural sandy sandbars that form parallel to the shore. You'll have sandbars that form parallel to the shore and they absorb the wave energy, okay? But in an eroded beach, those sandbars would have eroded and we don't have sandbars. So the waves, you know, this, uh, let's say, reach the shore with full impact and full energy and therefore the erosion process continues. So the idea here was to make a, a, a reef that would act like a temporary sandbar and absorb the wave energy, you know? Essentially, what the reef does is, it, it, does, it absorbs the energy, dissipates the energy uh, by deflecting the wave energy, that's number one. And the second thing, as far as the sand is concerned, it acts a little bit like a speed breaker. So the reef sta helps the sand stabilize a little bit, okay? And when that sand compartment is full, it allows the sand to overflow. Finally, in 2017, a decade into the formation of Pondi Can, the first signs of the beach's reappearance became visible. Today, nearly four and a half kilometers of the total 10 kilometers of the lost beach is back. Beach came back. We could see the multiple benefits that accrued because of the, of the beach. Firstly, the environmentally, environmental aspect. You have a whole food chain. You have these um, small crabs and shells on the, on the beach. That obviously, once the, it becomes, you create these habitats for fish breeding, it, will, it has an impact on the livelihoods of the fishermen because they would obviously have a better catch. And apart from that, the happiness quotient that you saw in, uh, that we, we never really take into account, you know, the, the people thronging on the beach, some days you would see there's nobody on the beach road, but the, the beach was absolutely packed. And uh, this actually, uh, Pondicherry is a, a tourist destination and this has revived tourism in a big way. Now since we have been able to rediscover that lost beach, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will enjoy taking those walks along the White Town area and this will bring to development of various other activities also related to tourism. We are planning to set up a few kiosks also. We are planning to provide those facilities which are required for people at beach, for example, lockers, changing rooms. So this will help in the tourists to have a pleasant experience when they're exploring the beach. But for Pondi Can, this is just the beginning. The next step is to extend the beach 10 kilometers to the north, 
up until Oroville. When the project is complete, Puducherry will have much more than patches of sand. It will regain a long shoreline, making it whole once again. Still, Pondy Can believes the real solution lies in the redesign of the harbour and the rethinking of the idea of development. It's not a question of you know pro-development, anti-development, pro-port, anti-port. It's a question of whether it makes economic and economic and social sense to to do certain uh, certain types of developments. Uh, it's all about cost benefit. You know, if uh, the costs for a society are more than the benefits, then that uh, that's not worth it. Uh, if the benefits are more, then it is worth it. Uh, in this case, it would seem that the costs are much more than the benefits.